Shaquille O'Neal's secret life will shock you. Shaquille O'Neal is considered one of the most well-known sports superstars in the world. His stardom comes not just from his physical dominance on the basketball court, something fans have never witnessed before or since in the NBA, but also from his larger-than-life demeanor. From owning 155 Five Guys restaurants to accomplishing side quests of being a cop, these are the most shocking facts about Shaq. Shaq blamed his divorce on Kobe. Shaq once blamed his ex-court partner Kobe Bryant as the reason for his divorce in real life. Yes, you heard that correctly, and we all found out about it through a freestyle rap from 2008. Bryant said that Shaq paid up to $1 million to numerous women to maintain their silence about his affairs while defending himself against a rape charge in 2004. This whole situation is ridiculous, Shaq said at the time on ESPN. When Shaq and his wife of nearly five years, Shawnee O'Neal, nay Nelson, separated in September 2007, Shaq was singing a new tune. I'm a horse. Kobe ratted me out. That's why I'm getting divorced. On the other hand, Shawnee alleges that Shaq's involvement with several other women was the real reason for their divorce. Come on, Shaq. Are you really going to blame Kobe for you cheating? Didn't like the smell of alcohol. Shaq became the NBA's toast almost instantly. Among his many honors, he was voted Rookie of the Year for the 1992-93 season and played in the All-Star Game his first four seasons. But despite being the new face of the game and the life of the party at 21, Shaq couldn't handle alcohol. Dennis Scott, his colleague, used to say, can't even tolerate the smell of table wine. It turns out there was a solid reason for this. My father caught me sipping a beer with my cousins when I was like 13, O'Neill told Vanity Fair years later. He made me drink a 12-pack right then. Not only did I get drunk, I hated beer, and I never had the urge to drink again. Despite his dislike for liquor, Shaq eventually launched his vodka line and appropriately named it Love Shaq. The twist of Shaq's jersey number. Harrison was responsible for Shaq owning his size and utilizing it to score somewhere under the basket, instead of hesitating and minimizing his obvious physical advantages. By Shaq's teens, Harrison had been restrained and relocated the family to San Antonio. Shaq, now a more composed and confident player, guided his high school team to a 68-1 record in his junior and senior years. Shaq's attempts to recognize Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the pioneering NBA center, were hindered because the school lacked a number 33 jersey. As a result, his iconic number 32 jersey was born. During his time at LSU, he was able to pick up the number 33. But during his rookie NBA season in Orlando, veteran Terry Catledge refused to give up his number 33 jersey, so Shaq was forced to wear number 32 for the rest of his time with the Magic. 10 years old and 6 feet 4 inches tall. The big Shaqtis was the biggest reason young basketball players quit in the greater Newark region in the middle of the 1980s. Shaq recalls a rival's parent entering the court and pulling his kid from the tournament mid-game, yelling, he's not 10, bullshit, he's 10, he's going to be the best big man in the world. Although angry, the man was correct. Shaq had grown to 6 feet 6 inches and wore size 17 shoes by the age of 13. Shaq was excluded from the original Dream Team. And yeah, he was furious. While the powers that be endeavored to choose the greatest NBA player possible to represent Team USA and compete against the rest of the world at the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, one roster slot was designated for a collegiate star. Shaq was a junior at LSU at the time and was eligible, but Christian Latner, a Duke star who was regarded to be more polished, took the place instead. The international free throw lane was created differently then, and the committee filling the roster with players feared the typical post-up centers, like Shaq, would lose efficacy. The young Shaq was not pleased. I was pissed off, he recalled 20 years later. I was jealous, but then I had to come to the realization that I was a more explosive, more powerful player, but Christian Latner was a little bit more fundamentally sound than I was. Fortunately, the snub only encouraged him, Team USA won gold in 1992, and again in Atlanta at the 1996 Olympics. Shaq was a member of that team. NBA panicked because of him. Shaq soundly defeated numerous weaker opponents over his career, and some of those opponents were constructed of solid metal. A particularly tremendous dunk in one infamous game versus the Phoenix Suns in 1993 resulted in the entire basket and its handrails collapsing. Off the bench as oh. follows it almost and does bring down the entire oh. backboard. 
The hoop's complete system had to be pushed into the tunnel for some mid-game repair. The big man terrorized the equipment so much that the NBA freaked out and strongly supported fortifying its centerpieces. Rod Thorne, one competition committee chairman, said that whether it was Shaquille O'Neal or someone else, with the size of these guys, it was just a matter of time. He just happened to be a little bigger and stronger than most. The NBA ultimately made damaging the basket ring or backboard a technical foul. So the NBA needed to shackproof the hoops. We had a new thing this year with backboards both coming down and being broken, Rod Thorne, the chairman of the competition committee at the time, told the Orlando Sentinel. We're going to make sure that all of the equipment is up to snuff. The New York Times disapproved of his acting. The New York Times lauded Shaq's endearing smile and genial personality in its review of 1997's Steel. Still, it was obligatory to concede he had an almost total lack of charisma and acting skills. They weren't as nice to Kazam, not to be confused with Sinbad's non-existent Shazam the year before. Mr. O'Neill can't hold a flickering lamp to Robin Williams, the paper of record claimed, which, to be fair, who can? And bemoaned that he didn't slam dunk the script into the nearest wastebasket. Shaq hasn't had many acting gigs since then, but he's made several cameo appearances in shows ranging from The Simpsons and The Real Housewives of Hollywood to The Lego Movie and What Women Want. The hack -a shack Technique Don Nelson, the former Dallas Mavericks coach, is responsible for this one. Nelson urged rookie Bubba Wells to foul Robin as many times as possible in a December 1997 away game against the Chicago Bulls to push the poor shooting worm to the line and win a few points. Nelson's brilliant, and quite unpleasant, technique worked. He went on to victimize Shaq, who had a career free throw percentage of 52.7%. The technique spread like wildfire throughout the league, but in 2016, a regulation was imposed to limit deliberate fouling. That's why the term hack a shack came around? We'd say it's brilliant. He works in law enforcement. Shaq's always had a high regard for law enforcement. Two of his uncles were police officers, and it's always been his desire to wear a police uniform. He simply happened to be a seven-footer who could wear various NBA jerseys instead. But once he was done playing, he rekindled his passion for joining the police department. He became a deputy sheriff in Georgia and Florida since he works for TNT in Atlanta and lives in a 70,000 square foot estate in Orlando. He's declared publicly that after his TNT career is finished, he intends to run for sheriff in any county. But if you want to see Shaq in a police uniform before that, switch to Grown Ups, where O'Neill plays a cop with Adam Sandler. Was unaware of his biological father until he was in his 40s. Shaquille Rashawn O'Neal was born on March 6, 1972, in Los Angeles, California. He weighed 7 pounds and 13 ounces, which is approximately normal for a newborn. Lucille O'Neal, his mother, had just completed high school, and his biological father, Joe Tony, was an all-state high school guard who had forfeited his basketball scholarship to Seton Hall due to drug use. Tony was sentenced to federal penitentiary when Shaq was still an infant. And after he was freed, Lucille convinced Joe to formally give his paternal responsibility to Shaq's stepfather, an army drill sergeant named Philip Harrison, who reared him from the age of two. Shaq had a happy childhood as a consequence. However, he sometimes wondered whether he might run across his real father when he returned to Vonda's Kitchen, a diner in Newark, New Jersey, which was just below Tony's apartment. Tony attempted reaching out once he made a reputation for himself. Once in Orlando, Shaq fled a basketball arena by a back entrance to avoid any encounter with Tony, who had shown up and wanted to meet. Shaq even publicly expressed his sentiments about their purposeful estrangement in a 1994 rap song, Biological Didn't Bother. However, with his Basketball Hall of Fame induction on the horizon in the summer of 2016, Shaq decided to see Joe, who was then approaching 70 at that restaurant. I don't hate you, Shaq told him. I had a good life. I had Phil. 